Hello players, let's take a look at my home theater PC. So this PC is media PC and it lives in the living room. It's running an AMD 3700X. There's an Asus Strix ROG X570 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 3080 Founders Edition. I am well aware that I've used up my entire luck for the year getting that card. The case is a Spec Omega RGB from Corsair. I've done a couple of videos on this case both of which will be linked at the end of this video if you want to check those out. It also has a Corsair all-in-one water cooler to keep it nice and quiet. Let's start with the TV because what your TV can do will influence your setup. This is a 70-inch Philips PUS 9005 Android TV and overall I'm very happy with it apart from the menus and the UI because it means switching to game mode is a real pain. There's no dedicated button for game mode. Ideally, you would have your picture settings on some kind of movie preset for watching films and TV to get the best picture quality and switch it to game mode when you want lower latency for faster response times. Our old Samsung TV made it very easy to switch between the two. The Philips is far too fiddly to change each time. I mean, it's buried through about three layers of menus. So now we use Kodi on the built-in Android on the TV, but I've kept Kodi on the home theater PC as a backup and it allows us to choose users easier when we're playing games. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. There are a couple of workarounds for the picture settings. If your TV switches to game mode easily or automatically with ALM, auto low latency mode, then great, you don't have to do anything. But if it doesn't and you have two HDMI ports on your GPU, then you can connect two HDMI cables to your TV and have HDMI 1 on the TV set up for movies and TV and HDMI 2 set up for games. This is our setup of Kodi, it's fairly typical, but I've added some extras, so clicking on game mode will close Kodi and open Play Night. When Play Night is closed, it will go back to Kodi. To get this to work, I wrote a script in Auto Hotkey, which I will link in the description. In order to get Kodi to run an application, you need to use a skin that supports custom menu items. Aeon Nox Silver Row, I think is what I'm using. And when you create a new menu item, this is the command you want to use and you can link it to any application. I link it to my script. I have also wrote another script which starts Play Night as a different Windows user, which allows another account to be used alongside it so we can have separate game saves and things like that. So we're using Play Night for the game screen, which is almost on par with Steam Big Picture. But what makes Play Night really cool is that it keeps all of your games in one place. So you can add all of your gaming accounts from Steam, Battle.net, Ubisoft, GOG, Epic, and it imports all your games without having to add them one by one. But Play Night really deserves its own video. All of that is great, but how do you control all of it? Well, I use three controllers, and that's not as bad as it sounds. First of all, we have the Logitech Harmony Universal Remote. I've set this up to turn on the PC and switch to the right channel, as you saw in the intro. It can also navigate the Kodi menu as well. And of course, it functions as a normal TV remote for the TV stuff. Next, we have the Xbox controller for playing games. Naturally, this can also navigate the Kodi menu and navigate the Play Night menu. And last and by, well, a little bit least, is the Re Mini keyboard. This is awesome in case something goes wrong. It has a touchpad and a full keyboard and I'll be making a whole video dedicated to this because I love it. Uh, so get subscribed if you wanna see that. But even in 2021, we still have some games with launchers and this allows me to click play, yay. It also is great for in-game chat or if I need to enter a username and password. But going back to the Xbox controller, you can also use this as a mouse to deal with game launches. As long as Steam is running, if you hold the Xbox button, you can move the mouse cursor with the left stick and also adjust the volume with the right stick. And holding the Xbox button and pressing left trigger will, use, will act as a left mouse click. But don't hold the button for too long because if you hold it for too long, the controller turns off. <laughs> so there's that. Now turning on the PC remotely via Alexa or the Harmony remote is not that easy to set up. I run all of that kind of stuff through Home Assistant, which is home automation software, which can run on something like a Raspberry Pi. If you want a full video on that, 
let me know because it is quite involved. The Xbox wireless dongle is, if it's plugged directly into the PC, you can wake the PC by pressing the Xbox button. Waking the PC isn't straightforward, unfortunately. Currently, there is no way to turn on the PC remotely when it's shut down. You can only wake it from hibernation or sleep. Hibernation uses very little power as it takes the contents of the RAM and dumps it to the hard drive, then kills all the power except to the network card. When it resumes from hibernation, it loads that data back from RAM to the hard drive and it's as you left it. Sleep keeps everything awake, just in a low power state. Some applications can still run and do things in sleep, but I use hibernation. And just a little icing on the cake, behind the sofa is an Anchor 5 port USB power brick and I've run two, the other ones over there, 10 foot USB cables down the sides and back of the sofa so it runs underneath so we can charge cables or phones while we play. Link for those are in the description. So this was an overview of where my home theater PC is now and it's always going to be a work in progress because it's fun. <laughs> and if you want me to go in depth about something specific, let me know in the comments below. If you want more like this, hit the thumbs up. And if you don't, hit the upside down thumbs up. Subscribe for more. And until next time, be excellent to each other and keep playing.